can achieve if you desire and if you do things right. I'm thankful to God for those things. Because in my life, those things, as I remember them, have God put them there to give me wisdom to continue to live and to be productive. I was talking to someone and, and they said, well, my children are not even grown. I only have one adult child and we're about the same age. And I said, really? It's one of my children. I said, oh, so you don't have any grandkids? No. I said, oh, I said, well, my wife and I, we have 21, 22 grandkids and a great grandson and other grandchildren that go to the church that not even blood. Really? <laughs> and the person said, but aren't we about the same age? I said, yes, but I started becoming a man when I was supposed to. You're supposed to start becoming a man when you're about 13, 14, 15 years old. I thank God that he put a heart in me to be what he intended me to be. I married young. I was 19. I was married for eight years to my first wife, and I've been married almost 30 years to the woman I'm married to now. I've been married all my adult life, with the exception of maybe a few months. I don't know what it's like not to be married as an adult, but for a few months. I thank God that he gave me a mindset to want to be a real man, not just to want to be 18 and leave the house, not just to want to be somebody baby daddy, not just to want to be a, a grown man just living by himself in a nice two-bedroom apartment making good money but nobody to share it with. I thank God. I want to talk to you about being able to always give thanks because life can dish out some very difficult things to each of us. When you're young, it's so challenging because parents want you to grow up and stay babies at the same time. <laughs> a lot of parents send these bad signals, and moms are the worst in most quarters. But if you have both your parents in your life, be grateful. Amen. Treat them with honor and with respect. 18 sounds like a fun number. 21 does too. But it's different when you're paying the bills. And you have to pay, go out and take care of your business. And you're sick and you got to miss work. It's different when you have to buy your clothes. Buy your groceries. Put gas in your car. Pay for your insurance. And be answerable for yourself. It's different. So you may think you're smart because you got a bad mouth. And you want to disrespect your parents. Instead of doing that, try saying, Mama, thank you. Daddy, thank you. Grandma, thank you so much. Uncle, I appreciate it. You may be surprised at what God will do once you become thankful. The book of Ephesians will tell us in chapter 5, Paul writes a beautiful verse. And he encourages us. He he, he has given the people some things to consider at this point. And he's speaking to them and speaking to us as dear children. And he gives us warning signs. He gives us a warning. And this is what Paul says. You can remain seated. Paul says, have no fellowship with the unfruitful works of darkness, but rather reprove them. For it is a shame even to speak of those things which are done of them in secret. He said, but all things that are reproved are made manifest by the light. For whatsoever doth make manifest is light. What he basically just said is you can't find that blouse you're looking for in the dark. You need to turn on the light. You can't find your way if you're blind. You need guidance. Wherefore, he says, awake thou that sleepest and arise from the dead, and Christ shall give thee light. Christ shall give thee light. Not your homeboy from the corner. Not the big guy in the sky. That's called a pilot. They're usually in planes. 
not not your homegirl, uh, not your crack dealer, or your dope dealer, or the boy homeboy you grew up with. Christ will give you light. See then that you walk circumspect, not as fools, but as wise. He said, don't be stupid. Some people are so stupid, it, it boggles my mind. I used to be 14. I used to be 15 and 16. And I found out as an, as an adult that when I was young, in my teens, my so-called peers thought that I was a man already. They admired me, and I didn't even know it. They trusted my judgment even as a young man because I carried myself worthy of that trust and that honor. I found this out only a few years ago that they were even upset when I left high school. And I asked him, I said, what were you upset about? He said, because you were our leader. I didn't even know I was their leader. I was too busy just being me. But nowadays, young people are so busy trying to be like everybody else, they don't even know who they are. It's an awful lot of movement. <coughs> so so you being young doesn't mean that you have to be stupid. I've never seen a generation so, so removed from being thankful for the opportunity to learn that they don't care to learn. It is rare to find young people on this side of town that's willing to read books. They act like reading a book is, is, is punishment. You mean really read the book, but it doesn't have pictures in it. It has chapters in it. They call them chapter books. I'd never heard that phrase until more, more recently. Because in my mind, all books have chapters. They act like it's something new. And then they wonder why they're lost, why they don't understand something. Be thankful for the opportunity to learn and seize upon it. Parents, my mom and dad, my mother, kept us reading books. I, we read everything. We read magazines. We read Jet. We read Ebony. We read Good Housekeeping. We read Southern Living. We read Ra Raisin Bran Ingredients and Kellogg Fresh Frosted Flake Ingredients. We read ingredients on the Clorox bottle. We read everything because reading was something that we were told you need to read as much as you can whenever you can. If it's not a text message or on Facebook, these kids don't want to have none of it. They don't want, they, they don't want, they're not grateful because the parents have taught them not to be grateful. Uh-huh, you got cafes in your house. The baby don't want eggs, so now you want to run to the store and get stuff to make them pancakes. Oh, but what do you want, mijo, mija? What do you want? Quit treating your child like they're already the king of everything. They're children. They want, they want hot breakfast, cut the yard before the sun come up. Did you wash my car? But we don't want to do it no more. I don't know, but he's so little. Guess what? Give him 10, 15 years. Yeah, you'll be putting your hearts up for mortgage so you can bail him out. Be grateful. Paul continues to write, he says, we need to be aware of the time. He says, redeeming the time because the days are evil. The world does not love you or your children. The world does not love you or your children. Too many of our young people are killing each other. Because they're too stupid to know what makes sense now. They want to make sure that they can show their figures by wearing clothes that accentuate their figures when they're 12 and 13 years. And mama's doing it too. Because for some reason, they think men aren't supposed to still want women. Men ain't supposed What you looking at? I'm looking at your nakedness. You for sale? Won't tell your daughter to pull your dress down a little bit. 
Go cover them things up. Everybody don't want to see your business. Beat that you. Then let something happen to your child and you want to pull your hair out. Won't pray with them. Won't read them the Bible. Won't ask them to read anything. Who, who you texting? You sound like your child. 30-something years old, still rolling blunts. You thankful it was on sale today. I'm so thankful he got the good bud today. Ooh, I'm so glad because I sure was needing me a joint. I'm so glad you came over. It don't matter your child is looking at this. Got brown tips, your fingers darker than your child. You're asking your 15, 18 year old to pass you a joint. You ought to be ashamed of yourself. That's not thankful. You're saying, Lord, this child means nothing to me. I don't want to teach them right. I want them to learn it on their own, like doggies do, like puppies do. We're supposed to be grateful for the gift of childhood. We're supposed to care about them enough to lead them to Christ. Even if you don't want Jesus and you know he's real, you ought to give him to your child. If you want to go to hell, go. But why would you want your child to go to hell? Why would you do that? And then did something happen? You did the best you could. Quit lying. We have a God that is a God of hope. He made a child sacrifice before he was even born. He said, my son is going to die. And we're supposed to be grateful for that death. Grateful for his life. And grateful for ours. The times are wicked. It's, it's, I, I heard a young lady some years ago say she couldn't wait to get pregnant. So she can get married. There is something when children, young women think you're supposed to get knocked up before you get married. That, can, that person in America. You would be surprised that years later I was reading something and the same sentiment is all over America. Young women are growing up thinking you're supposed to get pregnant before you get married. That's right. Young women are that stupid. You know why they're that stupid? Because somebody's not praying in their house. Somebody's not thankful that God had mercy on them. I, Lord, I thank you. I got pregnant out of wedlock, but you kept me. I'm saying, re, re, Mama, let him ask you, why are you always reading the Bible? Because you just don't know, girl. <laughs> you wouldn't have been here <coughs> if it had not been for Jesus. Um, but we don't want to tell them that. We want to tell them where they can go and find my cigarettes. Then on the coffee table. Go run there, look in the cooler, and give me one of them mojicas or whatever that is they drink it nowadays. Go look in the cooler. Got your children fetching beers for you. That's not thankful. We're supposed to love our children enough to tell them the truth. God expects you to be a young man doing your business. If you're not married, then you can't be laying around with different women. You're supposed to get, if you want to be 18 and married, be 18 and married. Let me teach you how to be ready for that. But we'd rather think it's cute when our unwed daughters bring home little babies. This is my granddaughter, and this is my daughter. Daughter still trying to get out of middle school. And, and this is her baby. Because you won't be thankful. We act like we forget. Oh, that ain't going to happen to my kid. That ain't going to happen to my kid. My daughter ain't going to get knocked up. My but if she does, that's okay. We'll kill the baby. We'll take the baby to the Planned Parenthood. That's such a bad name. That's such a lie. That it's called Planned Murder. That's what they ought to do. Change the name. Planned Baby Murder Shop. If you don't want your baby, we'll kill it. We won't even charge you that much. And if you don't want your mama to know, don't tell them. We won't tell them. We just want to kill your baby. You notice they put Planned Parenthood all on the poor part of town. 
You got to drive all the way from 1604 to come over here to kill your baby in secret. Teach your children to be grateful for life. Teach them to love one another and respect life and to trust God. Teach them that marriage is honorable at all and the bed is undefiled. You know, a hoe is a hoe is a hoe. It don't matter how nice she is. You can be clean, never have a disease, have all your teeth. Have some boss threads, drive a sweet ride. But if you're giving it up, you're a hoe. And he ain't your husband, he a hoe monger. I know people don't like that, but did he say how? Yes. I'm just telling you what the Bible say. A hoe is a hoe is a hoe. A harlot, even prostitutes get paid for it. Hoes just give it away. They'll give away their dignity, their self-respect. Yeah, they will. And then they'll play and they'll, they'll tell themselves, but there's not, it's not illegal. It's not that I'm not hurting anybody. Yeah, you are. You're hurting you and the little girl that might be looking at you, admiring you, that want to tell you, I like the way you praise God, but she can't. We have to look at the time, people. There's a wicked world that we live in. Our children are living in this world. I don't, I still in my mind don't understand why somebody making D's need a cell phone. Why would you give your teenager a cell phone? And they can't even flip eggs. They can't even make macaroni and cheese from a blue box. The most important thing to them is that their hair is, is done while they're in church. The most important thing to them is that they Snapchatting all over the place. That they got two layers of makeup on instead of one. The most important thing to them is that they make sure that that boy knows that I ain't playing with you. Why has it become popular for our daughters to say, that's just my baby daddy? And that's good. That's acceptable. What are we doing? What are you doing? Ask yourself, what am I doing? And we think it's all right. Because as long as the people at church don't see it, God can't possibly see it. God, as long as the people at church don't see me doing what I'm doing, you know, I can go to church and put on airs because they don't know for real. But God knows. There's nothing wrong with gratitude. But there's everything right about being thankful. I'm thankful for my life. I'm thankful for the time that I live in because God ordained it to be so. I'm thankful for these men behind me and their wives. I'm thankful for their children and their grandchildren. I'm thankful for those that call me pastor and those that wish I would just disappear. I'm thankful for those that speak good of me and those that speak evil of me. I thank God for them. I thank God for those that want to see me exalted and those that would love to bring me down. I thank God for a mother that if I was trying to pick my afro in church, she would have popped me upside my head and said, leave your hair alone and pay attention. That's what my mother would have done. Uh, but some mothers act like they're scared to put a hand on their child. And then they say, I love them. Love them enough to put a hickey right there on the side of their head with your fire. Pop, let that knot rise up. I'm almost through. He tells us to not be unwise. He says, but understanding what the will of the Lord is. He says, be not drunk with wine wherein is excess. In other words, it's already too much in the wine. He said, but be filled with the Spirit. Now, I love when he says, he says, speak it to yourselves in psalms and hymns and spiritual songs. Singing and making melody in your heart to the Lord. How hard is it to look at somebody? I know for some of us it's difficult to take a frown off because you're so used to wearing it. It's almost like you took a frown mask and you just glued it to part of your face. And if somebody say hello to you, the only part of you that smile is that little line you make. And then you can't even shake hands like you mean it. 
You shake hands like this. Like, like a fish. Somebody grab your hand and almost squeeze it. And they feel like it's dead because you, you ain't got no. You, you know what I'm talking about? You ever shake somebody's hand and they feel like you're shaking some. Ugh. But if we love one another, if we truly, there, if there's joy in your heart, you'll receive truth with joy. Even when it hurts. Even when it don't sound like something you want to hear. You know how I know? Because I have to live it. I live it. I, I, I've, I've hugged people and, and prayed for them after they've talked about me like a dog. And they didn't even know I knew it. And if I did know it, I'd love them still. I am thankful because God did not have to let my life be this life. God didn't have to let me be Pastor White. That night I got drunk and drove, dove off that two-story building into three feet of water. God could let my neck broke. Huh? God could, I, I could have been, when I got hit by that car as a child and that tire stopped this close to my head. It didn't have to be that way. But God had mercy. Huh? I'm thankful that God, if, I, if God had not touched my life, I wouldn't have Anthony. In my life. I wouldn't have sister twice in my life. I wouldn't have Cesar in my life. I wouldn't have Isaiah the hard head in my life. That's, the, that's his nightly name. So Isaiah the hard head. <laughs> that's a good name. This is where I am. Look around you. How many of these people did you know before Christ? How many of these faces did you see before this day? Thank God. Thank God for Ashley. Thank God for Jessica. Thank God for Miranda. Thank God for Marilyn. Thank God for baby sister and for Shoeless. Thank God for them. And when he says speak to each other in here, he don't mean go up to them and sing to them. You can do that to your wife or your husband or maybe to your daughter or your son, but he ain't talking about walking around like you're a higher Krishna. <coughs> but he said, have, that, have a delightful spirit about you. Everybody don't have to know you going through something. Everybody don't have to know that your heart is broken or that you're concerned about something. Some people can't, don't even want to talk to you. Be looking for a way out the minute they say they want, to, they want to hit themselves in the back of the head. The minute they say, how you doing? Oh, I asked the wrong person. <laughs> yeah. You know, some people, you don't want to open that up. You, you know what I'm talking about? You don't want to go to some people and say, oh, how you been doing? Oh, my goodness. You be thinking, I knew I should have got that butter and put it in my basket first. Because then I would have said, but my butter, you know, I got to go. <laughs> Put some ice cream in your basket. So you say, uh, I got to go, though. It's good seeing you. I'm going to pray for you. <laughs> uh, you make those, because once you ask them, they're going to tell you everything.